to see in olden days in varying and different ways was very much in vogue. Columbine and pantaloon, a wistful Pierrot meet the moon and Harley Quinn a rogue. Nowadays Parisians of leisure wake the echo of an old refrain. Each some ragged effigy will treasure for his pleasure till the shadows of the story live again. Parisian hero, society's hero, the lord of the day, the reed and the is under your sway. The world may flatter, but what does that matter? They'll never shatter your glory. Parisian Piero, your spirit's at zero, divinely forlorn, with exquisite scorn, from sunset to dawn, the limbo is calling, your star will be falling, as soon as the clock Mournfulness has always been the keynote of a Piero scene when passion plays a part. Piero in a tragic pose will kiss a faded silver rose and crush it to his heart. Someday soon he'll leave his tears behind him. Comedy comes laughing down the street. Columbine will fly to him admiring and desiring, laying love and adoration at his feet. Parisian hero, society's hero, the lord of the day, the rue de la paix, is under your sway. The world may flatter, but what does that matter? They'll never shatter your gloom profound. Caribbean pillow, your spirit's at zero. Divinely forlorn with exquisite scorn from sunset to dawn. The limbo is Calling, your star will be falling as soon as the clock goes round. Bewitched girl, better take care. Laughing at danger, virtuous stranger, better beware. The life you lead sets all your nerves a jangle. Your love affairs are in a hopeless tangle. Though you're a child, dear, your life's a wild typhoon. In lives of leisure, the craze for pleasure steadily grows. Cocktails and laughter, but what comes after, nobody knows. You're weaving love into a mad jazz pattern, ruled by pantaloon. Poor little rich girl, don't drop a stitch too soon. You're only a baby, you're lonely, and maybe someday soon you'll know. 
the tears you are tasting are years you are wasting. Life's a better hole. With fate, it's no use competing. Youth is so terribly fleeting. By dancing much faster, you're chancing disaster time alone will show. Poor little rich girl, you're a bewitched girl, better take care. Laughing at danger, virtuous stranger, better beware. The life you lead sets all your nerves a jangle. Your love affairs are in a hopeless tangle. Though you're a child, dear, your life's a wild typhoon. In lives of leisure, the craze for pleasure steadily grows. Cocktails and laughter, but what comes after, nobody knows. You're weaving love into a mad jazz pattern Ruled by pantaloons Poor little rich girl Don't drop a stitch too soon Romantic temperamentally, you must restrain it all you can. If you see life too sentimentally, you'll never find your man. You'll build such terribly pedantic dreams that your romantic schemes may go awry. Your thoughts are such. Claim too much, and love will pass you by. Mary, make believe dreams of a whole day through. Foolish. Mary, make believe Hide a little of her sleeve Nobody claimed her They only named her Always blowing mental bubbles till she's quite out of breath, quite out of breath. She seems to have the knack of magnifying trouble till they crush her to death, crush her to death. She's just a dove of the ineffective kind. She's bound to suffer from her introspective mind. Her indecisions quite prevent her visions coming true. Imagination is a form of flagellation if a sensitive child lets it run wild. It dims the firmament till all the world is permanently blue. She's simply bound to make a boomer until she's found a sense of humor. If love should touch her ever, she'll never, never see it through. Nobody claimed her.
sorrow will never come, or will it ever come Strained. 
There's a strange peculiar effervescence no one has explained. First you learn to fell a little bit, then if you excel a little bit, other things as well a little bit come your way. Though the process may be slow to you, knowledge of the world will flow to you steadily. You grow a little bit day by day. Though you're too gentle, sentimental, in fact, quite a dreary bore. Though you're aesthetic, apathetic to all men but Bernachore. The velvet glove a little bit, emulate the doll a little bit, try to learn to love a little bit more. First you learn to fell a little bit, then if you excel a little bit, other things as well a little bit come your way. Though the process may be slow to you, knowledge of the world will flow to you steadily. You grow a little bit day by day. Though you're too gentle, sentimental, in fact, quite a dreary bore. Though you're aesthetic, apathetic to all men but Bernachore. The velvet glove a little bit, emulate the dove a little bit, try to learn to love a little bit more. Use the bell. Love a little bit, emulate the dove a little bit, try to learn to love a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. When I'm feeling weary and blue, I'm only too glad to be left alone. Dreaming of a place in the sun when day is done, far from the telephone. Hardly ever see the sky, buildings seem to grow so high. Give me somewhere peaceful and grand Where all the land slumbers in monotone I'm world-weary, world-weary Living in a great big town I find it so dreary, so dreary Everything looks grey or brown I want an ocean blue Great big trees, the birds I view, of the Pyrenees, I want to watch the moon rise up, and see the great red sun go down, watching clouds go by through a windy sky, fascinates me, but if I do it in the street, every cop I meet simply hates me. Because I'm world-weary, world-weary Tired of all these jumping jacks I long to get right back to nature and relax Want a horse and plow, chickens too, just one cow with a wistful moo. I can hardly 
only wait till I see the great open spaces. My loving friends will not be there. I'm so sick of their damn fool faces. Because I'm world weary, work of world weary, tired of all these jumping jacks. I want to get right back to nature and relax. Whenever spring breaks through again, I may lie heavy between. But what has been is past forgetting. This sweet memory throughout my life will come to me. Though my world may go awry, in my heart will ever lie just the echo of a sigh. Goodbye. Will never seem so sweet again Till our destiny shall let us meet again The will of fate may come too late When I'm recalling these hours we've had Why will the foolish tears Tremble across the years Why should I feel so sad Treasuring the memory of these days All the way All the way I'll see you again Whenever spring breaks through again I may lie heavy between, but what has been can leave me never. Your dear memory throughout my life will come to me. Though my world has gone awry, though the years my tears may dry, I shall love you till I die. Once upon a time, many years ago, lived a fair princess hating to confess loneliness was torturing her soul. Then a gypsy came, called to her by name, wooed her with a song, sensuous and strong. All the summer long, her passion seemed to tremble like a living flame. Fly to me beneath a summer moon, Sigoyna, Sigoyna, Sigoyna. All I ask of life is just to listen to the songs that you sing. My spirit like a bird on the wing. Your melodies adoring, soaring. Call to me with some barbaric tune. 
Zegajna, Zegajna, Zegajna. Now you hold me in your power. Play to me for just an hour. Zegajna. Bid my weeping cease. Melody that brings Merciful release promises of peace through the gentle throbbing of the strings. Music of the plain, music of the wild. Hear me not in vain, soothe the heart in pain. Come to me again and let me to my happiness be reconciled. Play to me beneath a summer moon. Begoyna, begoyna. All I ask of life is just to listen to the songs that you sing My spirit like a bird on the wing Your melodies adoring, soaring Call to me with some barbaric tune Begoyna, begoyna, begoyna Now you hold me in your power, play to me for the just an hour. What are you doing here? I'm on my honeymoon. Very interesting. So am I. I hope you're enjoying it. it. It hasn't started yet. Neither is mine. Are you happy? Perfectly. Good. Are you? Ecstatically. What's she like? Hair. Very pretty. Plays the piano beautifully. Very comfortable. How's yours? I'd rather not discuss it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You'll probably come popping out in a minute and I shall see for myself. Have you known her long? About four months. We met on a house party in Norfolk. Very flat in Norfolk. There's no need to be unpleasant. There was no reflection on her, and that's of course she made it flatter. Your voice takes on an acid quality every time you mention her. I swear I'll never mention her again. Good. Now keep off yours. Thank you. Not at all. That orchestra seems to have a remarkably small repertoire. Strange how potent she's music is. had a sweet voice, Amanda. Thank you. What exactly were you remembering at that moment? Lots of things. So was I. What fools we were to ruin it all. What utter, utter fools. We were so ridiculously over in love. Yes. And yet, here we are starting off with two quite different people, in love all over again, aren't we? Aren't we? No. Yes. We're not in love all over again, and you know it. Good night, Amanda. Oh, well, you don't leave me. We won't talk about ourselves anymore. Talk about outside things, anything. I... Stay with me till I pull myself together. Very well. What have you been doing lately, during these last years? Uh, I, I went around the world, you know, after... Yes, yes, of course I know. How was it? The world? Yes. Very enjoyable. 
China must be very interesting. Very big, China. And Japan? Very small. Did you eat shark fins and take your shoes off and use chopsticks and everything? Practically everything. And India? The burning gods or gas or whatever they are on the Taj Mahal. How was the Taj Mahal? Unbelievable. A sort of dream. That was the moonlight, I expect. Of course, you saw it in the moonlight. Yes. Moonlight can be cruelly deceptive. And it didn't look like a biscuit box, did it? You know, I've, I've always felt that it might. Darling, I do love you so. I do hope you met a sacred elephant. There's Lynn White, I believe, it's very, very sweet. I've never loved anybody else for an instant. <laughs> and you love me too, don't you? There isn't any doubt about it anywhere, is there? No. No doubt anywhere. You're looking very lovely in this damned moonlight, Amanda. Your skin is clear and cool and your eyes are shining. And you're growing lovelier and lovelier every second as I look at you. You don't hold any mystery for me, darling. Do you mind? There isn't a particle of you that I don't know, remember, and want. I'm glad, my sweet. More than any desire in the world, deep down in my deepest heart, I want you back again. Please. Don't. Don't say any more. You're making me cry so dreadfully. I'm awfully glad we decided not to go out tonight. Or last night. Or the night before. Well, there's absolutely no reason to, and we're so cosy here. Exactly. Which is nice, isn't it, Elliot? Yes, but it's an awfully bad reflection on our characters. I think we ought to be absolutely tortured with conscience. We are, every now and then. Darling. <laughs> I never realized that such a thing could be. And when you went away, then I was sad because. For then I realized what a fool I was. Oh, oh, darling, you look so sweet in your little dressing gown. It is pretty ravishing, isn't it? Do you mind if I come round and kiss you? A pleasure, Lady Agatha. Thank you very much. Not at all. Big romantic stuff, this, darling. experimented on. Not when the experiments are successful. Why, in Vienna, I believe, you can see whole lines of decrepit old rats carrying on like the pillar girls. Oh, darling. <laughs> <laughs> you remember this one? Oh, when one is lonely, the days are long. Oh, of course. Time is so fleet. Why shouldn't we meet? Each night I sing you a lover song. It's incomplete, my sweet, my Oh, wow. 
Passion in a drama dirty doesn't go so deep. Camels, when they're mating, never thought themselves to sleep. Buffaloes can revel in it, so can any sheep. Why can't I? Any little fish can swim. Any little bird can fly. Any little dog or any little cat can do a bit of this and just a bit of that. Any little horse can neigh and any little cow can moo. But I can't do anything at all but just love you. Any little cock can crow, 
Any little fox can run. Any little crab on any little shore can have a little dead and then a little more. Any little owl can hoot to wit to woo and any little dove can coo. But I can't do anything at all but just love you. Across the brink, you've chained me and bound me. No escape now. Where's the grave now? When is the funeral going to be? Whenever I stop to think, see nature all round me. Then I see how stupidly monogamous I am. A lion in the circumstances wouldn't give a damn. For if there were no lion, if he'd lie down with a lamb. Why not me? Any little bug can bite. Any little bee can bug. Any little snail on any little oak can feel a little frail and have a little joke. Any little frog can jump like any little kangaroo. But I can't do anything at all but just love you. Any little duck can quack. Any little worm can crawl. Any little mole can frolic in the sun and make a little hole and have a little fun. Any little snake can hit in any little local zoo. But I can't do anything at all. But just love you. Laugh a bit, drink a bit, love a bit more. You can supply our need. Think a bit, chaff a bit. What's it all for? That's your Eurasian creed. Sailors with sentimental hearts who love and sail away when the dawn is grey. Look at you and say, half caste woman living a life apart. Where did your story begin? Half-caste woman, have you a secret heart waiting for someone to win? Were you born of some queer magic in your shimmering gown? Is there something strange and tragic deep, deep down? Half-caste woman, what are your slanting eyes, hoping and waiting to see? Scanning the far horizon, wondering what the end will be. Down along the river, the sky is a quiver, for dawn is beginning to break. Hear the sirens wailing, some big ship is sailing and losing your dreams in its wake. Why should you remember the things that are past, moments so swiftly gone? Why worry for the Lord knows life goes on. Go to bed in daylight, try to sleep in vain. Get up in the evening, work begins again. Think a tailor, soldier, sailor, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief, questioning the same refrain. Half caste woman, living a life apart. Where did your story begin? Half caste woman, have you a secret heart waiting for someone to win? Were you born of some queer magic? In your shimmering gown Is there something strange and tragic Deep, deep down Half-caste woman What are your slanting eyes Waiting and hoping to see Scanning the far horizon Wondering what the end will be. Oh. 
the first awakening of spring, the first unfolding of a flower. What is the promise that you bring? What is the secret you are whispering each magic hour? Maybe it is something in the air, for spring is meant for lovers only. Live for the moment and take care, lest love should fly and leave you lonely. But if love should leave you lonely, all my life I have been waiting, dreaming ages through, until today I suddenly discover the face and form of she who is my love. No more tears and hesitating. Fate has sent me you. Time and tide can never sever those who love us bound forever. Dear lover of my dreams, come true. All my life I have been waiting, dreaming ages through, until the day I suddenly discover the face and form of she who is my lover. No more tears and hesitating, fate has sent me you. Time and tide can never sever, those whom love has bound forever. Dear lover of my dreams, come. Getting me down. Who's escaped those weary 20th century blues? Why, if there's a God in the sky, why shouldn't he grin? High above this dreary 20th century din. In this strange illusion, Chaos and confusion, people seem to lose their way. What is there to strive for, love or keep alive for? Say, hey, hey, call it a day. Lose nothing to win or to lose. It's getting me down, down. Lose, escape these weary 20th century blues. Let's couple the future of England with the past of England, the glories and triumphs that are over and the sorrows that are over too. Let's drink to her sons who made part of the pattern and to the hearts that died with them. Let's drink to the spirit of gallantry and courage that made strange heaven out of unbelievable hell. And let's drink to the hope that one day this country of ours, which we love so much, 
will find dignity and greatness and peace again. In tropical climes there are certain times of day when all the citizens retire to take their clothes off and perspire. It's one of those rules the greatest fools obey because the sun is far too sultry and one must avoid its ultraviolet ray. The natives grieve when the white men leave their huts because they're obviously, definitely nuts. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The Japanese don't care to, the Chinese wouldn't dare to. Hindus and Argentines sleep firmly from 12 to 1, but Englishmen deter stars, siesta. In the Philippines, they have lovely screens to protect you from the glare. In the Malay states, there are hats like plates which the Britishers won't wear. At 12 noon, the natives swoon and no further work is done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. such a surprise for the Eastern eyes to see, that though the English are effete, they're quite impervious to heat. When the white man rides, every native hides in glee, because the simple creatures hope he will impale his solar topi on a tree. It seems such a shame when the English claim the earth, that they give rise to such hilarity and mirth. <laughs> <laughs> Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The toughest Burmese bandit can never understand it. In Rangoon, the heat of noon is just what the natives shun. They put the scotch or eye down and lie down. In a jungle town where the sun beats down to the rage of man and beast, the English garb of the English sab merely gets a bit more grease. In Bangkok, at 12 o'clock, they foam at the mouth and run. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The smallest melee rabbit deplores this foolish habit. In Hong Kong, they strike a gong and fire off a noonday gun to reprimand each inmate who's in late. In the mangrove swamps by the python rumps, there is peace from 12 to 2. Even caribous lie around and snooze, for there's nothing else to do. In Bengal, to move at all is seldom if ever done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday, 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 out in the midday sun. We've 
Imagine happiness that has passed. There'll be no regretting fun that didn't quite last. Let's look on love as a plaything. All these sweet moments we. Shining where clouds have been, maybe it's something to do with spring. I feel no older than seventeen. Maybe it's something to do with spring. A feeling I can't express, a sort of lilt in the air, a lyrical loveliness seems everywhere there. 
car resembles a rural dean. Maybe it's something to do with spring. The spring is here, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear, dear, can't you see? The simply agonizing sheen on every angry little tree. You must admit it's rather fun to think that every single thing that nature ever does is overdone. You see exactly what I mean. It all looks far too clean. A badly painted scene. The grass is far too green. Perhaps there's something we have missed. I never could have kissed a sentimentalist. Still, there's something in the atmosphere. A sort of something, dear, that makes me happy here. The sun is shining where clouds have been. Maybe it's something to do with spring. I feel no older than seventeen. Maybe it's something to do with spring. A feeling I can't express. A sort of lilt in the air. A lyrical loveliness seems everywhere there. That sheep's expression is quite obscene. Maybe it's something to do with spring. that charmed us so at last are ended. The party's over now, the dawn is drawing very night. The candles gather, the starlight leaves the sky. It's time for little girls and boys to hurry home to bed. For there's a new day waiting just ahead. Life is sweet, but time is sweet beneath the magic of the moon. Passing time may seem sublime, but it is ended all. 
thrill has gone to linger on would spoil it anyhow. Let's creep away from the day for the party's over now. I only know that when we were dancing, an enchantment swept over me. An enchantment that I've never known before and shall never know again. Oh, it's obvious that to you our behavior must look cheap, childish, idiotic, anything you like. But it's true, this magic that's happened. It's so true that all ordinary ways of behavior look shabby and unreal beside it. My heart's thumping. I'm trembling like a fool. And even now when I'm trying so hard, so desperately hard, to explain to you calmly and reasonably, I don't look at her. If I did, my eyes would brim over with these foolish tears, and I should cry like a child. If you can imagine my embarrassment when you politely ask me to explain man to man, I cannot help but feel conventional apologies are all in vain. You must see, we've stepped into a dream that set us free. Don't think we planned it. Please understand it. We were dancing. And the gods must have found it entrancing, for they smiled on a moment undefiled by the care and woe that mortals know. We were dancing, and the music and lights were enhancing our desire when the world caught on fire. She and I were dancing. Love lay in wait for us, twisted our fate for us. No one warned us, reason scorned us. Time stood still in that first sweet thrill. Destiny knew of us, guided the two of us. How could we refuse to see that wrong seemed right on that lyrical enchanted night? Logic supplies no laws for it, only one. Cause for it. We were dancing, and the gods must have found it entrancing, for they smiled on a moment undefiled by the care and woe that mortals know. We were. The music and lights were enhancing our desire when the world caught on fire. She and I were dancing. Ladies and gentlemen, with your very kind indulgence, my wife and myself will present to you our famous nautical extravaganza. Thank you, Bert. That's right. <laughs> To be done with a drunken sailor, so the saying goes. We are not tight, but we're none too bright, Grace Scott, I don't suppose. We lost our way and we lost our pay, and to make the thing complete, we've been and gone and lost the blooming fleet. Has anybody seen our ship, the HMS Peculiar? We've been on shore for a month or more. When we see the captain, we shall get what for. He, how my heart is, sing glory, hallelujah. A lady bold as she could be. Pinched our whistles at the golden key. Now we're in between the devil and the deep blue sea. Has anybody seen our ship back? Oh, la, 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 Shut up, shut up, shut up. Yeah, Jack, who was that lady I saw you walking down the street with the other day? That was no lady, that was my wife. Wait, wait for, for it, it, wait for it. Better to come, better to come. Yeah, why did you leave school? Why did I leave school, Jack? Yeah. Appendicitis. What do you mean, appendicitis? Ha, couldn't spell it. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh. Isn't that pretty, Ark? It'll never get well if you pick it. Oh. That'll go better second house. Yeah, yeah Jack, where what? was you last night? 
Where was I last night? Where was you last night? Cemetery. Oh, Tommy, anybody did. All of them. Hey! Hey! Nice for a minute, Captain. Nice for a minute. <laughs> I got a little riddle to ask you. You got a little riddle to ask me, Jack? Why is getting up at six o'clock in the morning like a pig's tail? I don't know, Jack. Why is getting up at six o'clock in the morning like a pig's tail? Twirly. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Now, 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 now. What's two? What's two? Yeah, Jack. What's I've been, uh, I've been very worried about you lately. Pourquoi, French? I heard you had edinoids. You heard I had edinoids. I heard you had edinoids. I don't speak of it. I don't speak of it. Why not? Edinoids. Oh, what's to be done with the girls on shore who lead our tars astray? What's to be done with the drinks galore that make them pass away? We got wet years from our first five beers. After that, we lost control. And now we find we're up the blinking pole. Has anybody seen our ship? The HMS disgusting. We three guns aft and another one four. They promise us a funnel for the next world war. Heave ho, my hearties. The quarter deck needs dusting. We had a binge last Christmas year. Yeah. A nice plum pudding and a round of beer. Yeah. But the captain pulled his cracker and we cried, Oh dear, has anybody seen our ship? Has anybody seen our ship? The HMS suggested. Oh. She sailed away across the bay and we haven't had a smell of it since New Year's Day. Eve, how my heart is, we're getting rather restive. We pulled our money, spent the lot. The world forgetting by the world forgot. Now we haven't got a penny for the you know what. Does anybody see now? Anybody see now? Anybody see now? Shut up! Now then. Now then what? Now then what? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't, don't no, you? No, I don't, so shut up. I suppose you don't know you mucked up the exit. It wasn't my fault. Whose fault was it then? Mussolini's? Oh, funny, hey? Well, I suppose you didn't drop your prop, did you? And having dropped it, you didn't have to go back for it, did you? Leaving me to prance off all by myself. Who do you think you are, Rebler? Never mind about that. The exit was too quick. Same as what it's always been. It's too quick, I tell you. It's been too quick the whole week. The whole number's too quick. Bert Bentley takes that number at exactly the same tempo as he's always done. Oh, you and your Bert Bentley. Just because he stands your Welsh rabbit at the Queen's, you think he's God Almighty. Bert Bentley's one of the finest conductors in the north of England, and don't you make any mistake about it. Finest conductor, my foot. I suppose he thinks it's funny to see us leaping up and down the stage like a couple of greyhounds. If you're a greyhound, I'm Fred Astaire. No. Oh, you're Fred Astaire, all right, with a bit of pavlova thrown in. You're wonderful, you are. There's anything you can't do except behave yourself like a gentleman. Oh, so expect me to behave myself like a gentleman. That's a good one coming from oh, you, I will up. say. Oh, shut up, you make me tired. I make you, I make you tired. I suppose it was me mucked up the exit. I suppose it was me dropped me blasted telescope. Now, look here. Look here, George Pepper. Will you stop George Pepper in me? Why can't you admit it when you're in the wrong? You mucked up the exit. Nobody else did. You did. Well, what if I did? It was an accident. I didn't do it on purpose. Lily. It doesn't matter how you did it or why you did it. You did it. Oh, all right, I did it. Well, don't do it again. What's on, Ducks? Mabel Grace. She's nearly finished. Uh, She's been finished for years, as far as I'm concerned. What's the matter with Mabel Grace? Uh, ask the public, dear, that's all. Just ask the public. Mabel Grace is an artist, and don't you forget it. She may be a bit long in the tooth now, but she's a bigger star than you'll ever be, so there. You make me sick. Sucking up to the top liners. Who sucks up to the top liners? You do. Look at Irene Baker. What's the matter with Irene Baker? Well, when last heard from, she was falling down drunk at the Empire Artley Pool. That's a dirty lie. Irene never touches the drop till after the show, and well, you know it. Oh, Irene was Miss Baker this and Miss Baker that the last time you saw her. And that's all you know. Oh, trying to make me think you got off for the day. <laughs> what a charm. If a day ever dawns when you can time your laughs like Irene Baker does, I'll give you a nice red apple. A fat lot of laughs I'd get when you write the gags. If you're dissatisfied with your material, you know what you can do with it. Yeah, I know what I'd like to do with it. Can't even do a straight walk-off without mucking it up. Oh, we're back again at that, are we? Yes, we are, so there. Look here, I'm sick of you and the old act. It's lousy anyway. The act was good enough for my mum and dad. It's good enough for you. Mm. Well, things have changed, you know, a bit since your mum and dad's day. There's electric light now and telephones. A little invention called the moving pictures. I mean, nobody wants to see the red peppers for three bob and they can have garbo for ninepence. That's just where you're wrong, see? We are flesh and blood, we are. The public would rather see flesh and blood any day than a cheesy photograph. Put garbo on on a Saturday night in Devonport and see what had happened to her. Yeah, you ought to know. Look what happened to us. That wasn't Devonport, it was Southsea. Well, whatever it was, the fleet was in. If you think the act's so lousy, it's a pity you don't rewrite some of it. Oh, have I tried going into St Paul's and offering to rewrite the Bible? 
<laughs> oh, very funny. Very, 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 very funny. You're wasted in the show business, dear. You ought to write for comic cuts, you ought. I could think up better gags than you at that. That wasn't a lady, it was my wife. Hoary old chestnuts. Why were they were has-beens when your grandmother fell off the eye wire. And what, may I ask, has my grandmother got to do with it? Only that she didn't fall soon enough, that's all. Red peppers, three minutes. My God, we're off. Here, oh, Harry. Come on, come, yeah, come on, on, don't on. keep the customers waiting. You've got your cane? Yes, I've got it. Well, don't drop it. All right. <laughs> Find it thrilling to do the killing We're always willing to give the girls a treat or Just to drink at the Ritz Call it double or quits For then we pay the world is at our feet Top hats, white specks Look divine on us, there's a shame on us Get a lane on us when we come your way Gad, eleven o'clock Her lips pop into the trunk Now we stop the business of the day as we stroll down in Piccadilly in the bright morning air, all the girls turn and stare. We are so nonchalant and frightfully debonair as we chat. Tea, Rose, Maud, or Lily, you should see the way their boyfriends frown. For they know without a doubt that their luck's right out when they see a couple of men about town. As we stroll down, down busy Piccadilly, all the girls say, who's young? Put your nets to my dear, for it's Marmaduke and Percy Vardivere as we dock. Heads. Each pretty Billy gives a wink at us and then looks down. For they long with all their might for a red hot night when they see a couple of men about town. It doesn't that I want to make you unhappy, but you must admit we haven't been hitting it off particularly well during the last year. And surely if we are not comfortable together, the wisest thing is to separate. I feel so sad about it inside. I wish I could make you understand. Everything was so lovely in the beginning. Things never stay the same. You can't expect what was lovely then to be lovely now. Why not, why not? Then we were happy. But darling, you must see. Here in the light of this unkind familiar now, every gesture is clear and cold for us. Even yesterday's growing old for us. Everything's changed somehow If some forgotten lover's vow Could wake a memory in my heart again Perhaps the joy that we knew would start again Can't we reclaim an hour or so? The past is not so long ago Love was complete for us, then the days were sweet for us, life rose to its feet for us and stepped aside before Maybe it won't be as lovely as I thought it was. Don't be a fool. Grab it while you can. 
Grab every scrap of happiness while you can. Quickly, quickly, we're going back. Play. Go on playing. We must have music. Listen to the strain it plays once more for us. There it is again, the past in store for us. Wake in memory some forgotten song to break the rhythm driving us along. And make harmony again, the last one call for us. Play, orchestra, play, play something sweet and light and gay. For we must have music, we must have music to drive our fears away. While our illusions swiftly fade for us, let's have an orchestra score. In the confusions the years have made for us, serenade for us just once more. Life needn't be great. Though it is changing day by day, the few old dreams may decay. Play orchestra, play. Life needn't be gray. Though it is changing day by day, the few old dreams may decay. Play orchestra, play orchestra, play. Are you engaged for this dance? I was. But I'll cut it if you promise to love me always and never let anything or anybody come between us, ever. But of course that's understood. I saw you in the ballroom. I wondered who you were. My name's Victoria. Victoria Martin. Mine's Simon Gayforth. How do you do? Quite well, thank you. I suppose you came down from London for the dance? I'm staying with the Bursbys. What do you do? I'm in a bank. High up in a bank? Or just sitting in a little cage, totting up things? Quite high up, really. It's a very good bank. I'm so glad. How lovely you are. No, no, no. That came later. You're skipping. I'm so sorry. You're nice and thin. Your eyes are funny. You move easily. I'm afraid you're terribly attractive. You never said that. No, but I thought it. Stick to the script. Small talk. A lot of small talk with other thoughts going on behind. And this garden's really lovely. Are you good at gardens? Not very, but I'm persevering. I'm all right on the more straightforward brooms, like snapdragon and cornflower and tobacco plant, and I can tell a Dorothy Perkins a mile off. That hedge over there is called Cupressus macrocarpa. Do you swear it? It grows terribly quickly, but they do say it gets a little thin underneath in about 20 years. How beastly of them to say that. It's slander. Did you know about valerian smelling of cat? You're showing off again. It's true. I can go one better than that. Lotuses smell of pineapple. Oh, dear. Everything smells of something else. It's dreadfully confusing. Never mind, darling. I love you desperately. I knew it the first second I saw you. No, no, no. You're skipping again. Was it in the real world or was it in a dream? Was it just a note in some eternal theme? Was it accidental or accurately planned? How could I hesitate, knowing that my fate led me by the hand? You were there. I saw you and my heart stopped beating. You were there. And in that first enchanted meeting, life changed its tune. The stars, the moon, came near to me. Dreams that I dreamed like magic seemed to be clear to me. Dear to me, you were there. Your eyes looked into mine and faltered everywhere. The color of the whole world altered came true, my universe tumbled into, the earth became heaven for you were there. You were there, I saw you and my heart stopped beating. Seem to be clear to me. 
into mine and bottles everywhere. The color of the whole world all at once became true. My universe tumbled into the earth became My dears, a toast. Be prepared. To ourselves, the close reunited family, and to the dear strangers who have joined us, I allude to you, Jane Darling, and Edward, and my dear Charles. Does that mean that we three may not drink? Certainly not. Drink to yourselves, to each other, and to the happiness of us all. Good. Oh, do be quiet, Charles. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? To the happiness of us all, my love. Thank you, Jane. Here's a toast to each of us, and all of us together. Here's a toast to happiness and reasonable pride. May our touch on life be lighter than a seabird's feather. May all sorrows as we pass politely step aside. A commonplace sentiment, my dear Jasper, worthy neither of you nor of the moment. Moments fly so swiftly, my love. I thought what Jasper said was beautiful. Hush, Emily. Jane's chiding merely means that she would have liked to have thought of it herself. Get on with the toast, Jasper. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Gasping in the deeps of your own imagination, my love. Thank you. Now I drink to those of us who happily united, ornament our family, and share our joy and pain. Charles, my friend, and Edward, too, can you be plighted? Last, my dears, but always best. My own beloved Jane. Charmingly put, my dear Jasper, if a trifle pedantic. I do my best, my love, but my best is obviously unworthy. Oh, do stop sparring, you two. Sparring, what a vulgar expression. Oh, where was I, where was I? In command, my love, as always. Harriet married a soldier, a man of pleasant birth, a man of noble worth and finely tempered steel. Ready to die for the empire, the sun must never set upon this brave but yet ambiguous ideal. So now, dear Charles, I am saluting you, that never setting sun shall call you blessed. If far off natives take to shooting you, you will at least have done your level best. Harriet married a soldier. May life be bright for him. May life be right for him forever and forever. Harriet married a soldier. And in the matrimonial, Harriet married a soldier. Despite his glories in the field, he had to honor and obey. And be defeated till judgment. Charles rules me with a rod of iron. Oh, dear Harriet, we salute your strategy that makes him believe it. Now we come to Emily, whose progress has been steady. Only married two short years and three fat sons already. You make me blush, Jasper. We count the twins as one. Nevertheless, my love, they are normal babies with a mouth each to feed. Emily married a doctor. A sentimental man, a mild and gentle man of scientific mind, doing his best for the nation, forever dutiful, a really beautiful example to the rest of us, a challenge to the zest of us, the noblest and the best of us combined. I accept your tribute, Jasper, while doubting its complete sincerity. But the surface value is warming enough. I thank you, Jasper. Edward. Edward. Another tune. I remember distinctly it played another tune. You mustn't ask too much of it. It was a waltz. Yes, yes, of course it was a waltz. Don't you remember we danced to it years later at a ball before we were married? It was this. It was this. Hearts and flowers, dreamy hours under skies of blue. 
Sweet to remember, oh, how so clever sweet they beat in tune. that was their love song. Neath the midnight magic of the moon, petals falling, lovebirds softly calling, life begins anew. remember father humming it between his teeth when he was whacking me with a slipper. An excellent example of two hearts beating to the tune. A crude joke, Charles. Back to the barrack room. We found it inspiring enough, did we not, my love? Olympian, the loveliest song in the world. Hearts and flowers, bygone hours, all the time. Yes, Burroughs. Would you like a little Madeira? I should be honored, Mr. Jasper. Here. At your service, always. Thank you. Have I your permission for a moment? Certainly, Burroughs. What is it? The musical box. There should be a little tune. A little tune from the years that are dead. Allow me. I drink to you all. And to you, sir. And mine. This house was happy when there were children in it. Let the angels guide you, be good and brave and true. Let the angels guide you, oh, do, oh, do, oh, do. Turn his heart and patience, avoid each evil year. Keep your conversation in order to live good. Good may be rewarded in some indefinite place. He always said to us, just in faith. Suddenly my world had dropped away Somewhere in space some new lovely star appeared To rule our destiny forever and a day I knew the moment that I touched your hand The gods had planned our meeting Now in this instant in the whole of time Our lover's rhyme is near completing I saw you turn away and for a while my poor heart drooped and faltered. And then I saw your strange elusive smile and all my life was altered. My dearest dear, forevermore the happiness I've waited for at last is here. 
Exquisite romance forever has a span for this that we have found no time or tide could serve. And Lord Camp, with every virtue, every grace, are what avails the sceptred race. Here you see the four of us, and there are so many more of us eldest sons that must succeed. We know how Caesar conquered Gaul and how to whack a cricket ball. Apart from this, our education lacks coordination. Though we're young and tentative and rather rip-representative scions of a noble breed. We are the products of those homes, serene and stately, that only lately seem to have run to seed. The stately homes of England, how beautiful they stand, to prove the upper classes have still the upper hand. Though the fact that they have to be rebuilt and frequently mortgaged to the hilt is inclined to take the guilt off the gingerbread and certainly damps the fun of the eldest son. But still we won't be beaten, we'll scrimp and screw and save. The playing fields of Eton have made us frightfully brave. And though if the Van Dykes have to go and we pawn the Beckstein brand, we'll stand by the stately homes of England. Here you see the pick of us you may be heartily sick of us still with sense. We're all imbued. Our homes command extensive views, and with the assistance from the Jews, we have been able to dispose of rows and rows and rows of Gainsboroughs and Lawrences, some sporting prints of Aunt Florence's, some of which were rather rude. Although we sometimes flaunt our family conventions, our good intentions mustn't be misconstrued. The stately homes of England we proudly represent. We only keep them up for Americans to rent. Though the pipes that supply the bathroom burst and the lavatory makes you fear the worst, it was used by Charles I, quite informally and later by George IV. On a journey north, the State Department's keep their historical renown. It's wiser not to sleep there in case they tumble down. But still, if they ever catch on fire, which with any luck they might, we'll fight for the stately homes of England. The stately homes of England, though rather in the lurch, provide a lot of chances for psychical research. There's the ghost of a crazy younger son who murdered in 1351 an extremely rowdy nun who resented it. And people who come to call meet her in the hall the baby in the guest wing who crouches by the grate 
was walled up in the West Wing in 1428. If anyone spots the Queen of Scots in a hand-embroidered shroud, we are proud of the stately homes of England. About a highly born Hungarian Though gypsy blood was red, her blood was blue And very definitely Aryan She loved the proletarian In a valley far away a gypsy minstrel came to play a serenade Everyone from far and near collected in the woods to hear the tune he played Wild and free, that haunting melody enchanted maid and man. Young and old believed the tales he told and joined his caravan. A most impulsive, foolish man. Their troubles then began. The rain soon drove them home again, no longer wild and free. Snow and hail had made that nightingale sound very much off key. 
a sorry tale you will agree. What fools these mortals be? But one poor lady left her heart behind, and from that moment life was sad for her. Nought could bring comfort to her troubled mind, which on the whole was very bad for her. That is why to any gypsy passing by, she'll always sigh. Play me a gypsy melody from far away. An echo wild and gay from some forgotten yesterday. My lonely heart can still remember those magic nights beneath the open sky. So, gypsy, play for me that song I love until the day I die. can still remember those magic nights beneath the open sky. So, gypsy, play for me that song I love until the day I die. Clouds of sorrow fill the sky no more. Cry no more. Die no more. Those little deaths at parting, new life and new love are starting. Sing again. Sing again. The winter's over and it's green again. Joy is yours. The door. Sweet and beguiling lady, sigh no more, sigh no more. Sweet and beguiling ladies, sigh no more. Poor mournful ladies, are you weeping for a dream once dreamed? Are you still listening for some remembered theme that seemed to promise happiness and love and gentle years devoid of fears? Sweet music starts again. Lift up your hearts again and try and. To dry those tears. Sigh no more, sigh no more. Gray clouds of sorrow fill the sky no more. Cry no more, die no more. Those little deaths at parting, new life and new love are starting. Sing again, sing again. The winter's over and it's spring again. Joy is your troubadour. Sweet and beguiling ladies, sigh no more,
grandeur that we read about and may have been misled about in one respect has kept itself intact. Though Pakistan traditions may have cracked and thinned, the good old Indian arm is still a fact. That famous monumental man, the officer and gentleman, still lives and breathes and functions from Bombay to Kathmandu. At any moment one can glimpse matured or embryonic blimps vivaciously speculating as to what became of who though eastern sounds may fascinate your ear when west meets west you're always sure to hear whatever became of old Baggart? you know i haven't seen him for a year is it true that young briggs had to marry that faggot he met in the vale of Kashmir? have you heard any news of that chap in the blues was it sotherby Sedgwick or Sim? He was stationed in Simla, or was it Bengal? But I know he got blind at a ball in Nepal and wrote several four-letter words on a wall. I wonder what happened to him. Whatever became of old Shelley, is it true that young Forbes was cashiered for riding quite nude on a pushbike through Delhi the day the new Viceroy appeared? Have you heard any word of that bloke in the third? Was it Prosser, or Pycroft, or Pym? They had him chucked out of the club in Bombay, but apart from his mess bills exceeding his pay, he took to pig sticking in quite the wrong way. I wonder what happened to him. One must admit that by and large, upholders of the British Raj don't shine in conversation as a breed. Though Indian Army officers can read a bit, their verbal wit has rather antecedent. Their splendid insularity and roguish jocularity were echoing through India when Victoria was queen, in restaurants and dining cars, in messes, clubs, and hotel bars. They try to maintain tradition in the way it's always been. The worlds may change and nations disappear. Above the shrieking chaos, you will hear. Whatever became of old Tucker? Have you heard any word of young Mills, who ruptured himself at the end of a chucker and had to be sent to the hills? They say that young Lees had a go of DT, and his hopes of promotion are slim. According to Stubbs, who's a bit of a louse, the silly young blighter went out on a souse and took two old tarts into government house. I wonder what happened to him. Whatever became of old Archie, I hear he departed this life after rounding up ten sacred cows in Karachi to welcome the governor's wife. Do you remember Munro in the P-A-V-O? He was tallish and mentally dim. That talk of heredity can't be quite true. He was dropped on his head by his ayah, a two. I presume that by now he'll have reached GHQ. Yes, I'm sure that's what's happened to him. To live without romance, let me be saying the time changes the tune, changes the pale unwinking stars, even the moon. Let me be soon strong enough to flout romance and say you're out. Romance never again. Over now, the dream is over now. Maybe it really wasn't so important anyhow. What's been can't be again, reluctantly I see. My heart is free again, belongs to me again. 
The brief illusion my litter has gone No more confusion and tears from now on To start again and break my heart again If you should ask me to I'd say to hell with you No, never again Never the strange unthinking joy Never the pain Let me be wise Let me learn to doubt romance Try to live without romance Let me be sad A time changes the tune Changes the pale unwinking stars Even the moon Let me be soon Strong enough to float romance a tiny lad, my nurse rehearsed me in a set routine of good and bad. When I grew up, my parents would unduly emphasize the gulf between the bad and good. Aware that love can be a most destructive force, I try to steer a middle course. There's a right way and a wrong way, there's a weak way and a strong way, take it easy, drive with caution when the road is greasy, wait a bit, wait a bit, Joe, there's an old way and a new way, there's a false way and a true way, keep your ears back and you'll never have to fight the tears back, wait a bit, wait a bit, Joe. Never trust your conscience as a method of defense When old Adam bubbles up inside On mature reflection you will find that common sense Is a far more serviceable guide There's the wrong life and the right life There's the home life and the night life But whichever direction you go Wait a bit, wait a bit, Joe. There's a right way and a wrong way. There's a short way and a long way. Let your hair down, but before the thrill begins to wear down, wait a bit, wait a bit, Joe. There's a dull way and a smart way. There's a head way and a heart way. Love may fret you. But before you let the goblins get you, wait a bit, wait a bit, Joe. Try to keep your balance and endeavor to create a design for living at your ease. If you're over eager and go snapping at the bait, you will end by giving at the knees. There's a last love and a first love, there's a best love and the worst love if you don't want to lose on the throw wait a bit wait a bit wait a bit wait a bit Nina from Argentina knew all the answers, although her relatives and friends were perfect dancers. She swore she'd never dance a step until she died. She said, I've seen too many movies, and all they prove is too idiotic. 
They all insist that South America's exotic, whereas it couldn't be more boring if it tried. She added firmly that she hated the sound of soft guitars beside a still lagoon. She also positively stated that she could not abide a southern moon. She said, I hate to be pedantic, but it drives me nearly frantic when I see that unromantic, sycophantic lot of sluts forever wriggling their guts. It drives me absolutely nuts. She refused to begin the begin of when they requested it. And she made an embarrassing scene if anyone suggested it. For she detested it. Though no one ever could be keener than little Nina on quite a number of very eligible men who did the rumba. When they proposed to her, she simply left them flat. She said that love should be impulsive, but not convulsive, and syncopation had a discouraging effect on procreation, and that she'd rather read a book, and that was that. She refused to begin the begin when they besought her to. And in language profane and obscene, she cursed the man who taught her to. She cursed Cole Porter too. From this it's fairly clear that Nina, in her demeanor, was so offensive that when the hatred of her friends grew too intensive, she thought she'd better beat it while she had the chance. After some trial and tribulation, she reached the station and met a sailor who had acquired a wooden leg in Venezuela. And so she married him because he couldn't dance. The surely never could have been a more irritating girl than Nina. They never speak in Argentina of this degenerate bambina who had the luck to find romance, but resolutely wouldn't dance. She wouldn't dance. Oh, yeah. Jean-Louis Dominique Pierre Bouchon, true to the breed that bore him, answered the call that held him through his father's heart before him. Jean-Louis Dominique sailed away further than love could find him. Yet in the night he heard a light and gentle voice behind him say, Matalo, Matalo, where you go, my heart goes with you. Matalo, Matalo, when you go down to the sea. For a year and a day you may sail away and have no thought of me. Yet through the wind and the spray you will hear me say, No love was ever free. You will sigh when horizons are clear. Something that is dear to me Cannot let me be Matalo, Matalo Where you go, my heart goes with you Matalo, Matalo When you go down to the sea Jean-Louis Dominique Pierre Bouchon traveled the wide world over. Lips that he kissed could not resist this loving, roving rover. Jean-Louis Dominique, right or wrong, ever pursued a new love. Till in his brain he heard a strain he knew to be his true love song. Matalo, Matalo, where you go, my heart will follow. Matalo, Matalo, 
when you go down to the sea. When there's grief in the sky and the waves ride high, my heart to yours will say, you can be sure that I'm true to my love for you, though half the world away. Never mind if you find other charms Here within my arms you'll sleep Sailor from the deep Matalo, Matalo Where you go my heart will follow Matalo, Matalo When you go down to the sea so gaily by, I thought I heard a different note, a little sigh, which seemed to say, this is your day, be careful please, be careful please, don't let this light enchantment fade away, this is your day, this is your day, though we may never meet again, there'll never be a day so sweet again, deep in my heart, no matter what the troubled years may bring, a secret voice will
listen please, I'll tell you confidentially How ADCs are trained in social grace They must be brave, for daily they are called upon to save His Excellency's face Any explanations of the duties of an ADC Prove the complications that are rife a government house Certain situations they can never let a lady see There are strange vibrations in the life of government house Truth is often sacrificed for reasons of diplomacy But of course you understand that all the same It's rightfully grand to be so suave, so calm, so dignified If you knew what all that signified They who break the ninth commandment every day Would hang their heads in shame and say Forgive, we have to live Officially on feet of clay Every minute we're made to sin It is really very depraved But to hell with the lies we tell His Excellency's honor must be saved His Excellency regrets that owing to an attack of gout he really dare not venture out on Saturday to dine. His Excellency regrets that owing to doctor's orders he cannot attend the mission tea and also must decline. Your kind invitation for Wednesday week, a slight operation and poor circulation combined with a weedy physique has made him unable to speak. All this in addition to what the doctors describe as a clot which may disappear by the end of the year, but may very possibly not. His Excellency regrets that owing to his exalted state, he can no more associate with amiable brunettes. Walk up, walk up, we're willing to take your bets, but that's one of the principal things His Excellency regrets. So now you know about the diplomatic corps, how it can so corrupt the soul of you. What happens if someday they gave the waiting world a whip? of plain unvarnished truth. His Excellency regrets that failing a better alibi, he must admit he'd rather die than open your bazaar. His Excellency regrets that lacking enough official scope, he can't disband the band of hope no matter where they are. He frankly despises the people he rules. His gorge also rises when giving the prizes at co-educational schools to rows of illiterate fools. And if you should write in the book, He'll give you a murderous look, for it ruins his day to be taken away from his rod and his line and his hook. His Excellency regrets he hasn't enough to run the house or pay the staff or feed a mouse upon the pay he gets. Hey ho, hey ho, he's up to his ears and debts, but that's one of the least of the things His Excellency regrets. <laughs> Changing world, my dear New songs are sung New stars appear Though we grow older Year by year Our hearts can still be gay Young love at best Is a passing phase Charming and foolish and blind There may be happier Wiser days when youth is far behind. Where are the snows of yesteryear when winter's done and spring is near? No regrets are worth a tear. We're living in a changing world. The world was young so many, many years ago The passage of time must show some traces of change Love songs once sung, much laughter, many tears have echoed down the years. The past is old and strange. This is 
Passions of feckless cavalier Who loves and rides away Time will persuade you to laugh at grief Time is your tenderest friend Life may be lonely and joy be brief But everything must end Love is a charming souvenir When day is done and night draws near No regrets are worth a tear We're living in a changing world, my dear Families have tradition, we've heard them a thousand times, our ancestors were unequivocally right. They frequently went on missions to very peculiar climes to lead the wretched heathen to the light. Though some of them were beaten up and some of them stampeded, though quite a lot were eaten up, a few of them succeeded. On one of these expeditions, an uncle we thought a bore turned out to be more spirited than ever he'd been before. Uncle Harry wanted to be a missionary, so he took a ship and sailed away. This visionary, hotly pursued by Vera and Mary, found a South Sea Isle on which to stay. The natives greeted them kindly and invited them to dine on yams and clams and human hams and vintage coconut wine, the taste of which was filthy, but the after effects divine. Poor Uncle Harry got a bit gay and longed to tarry. This Aunt Mary couldn't quite allow. She lectured him severely on a number of church affairs. But when she'd gone to bed, he made a getaway down the stairs. For he longed to hear the answer to a few of the maiden's prayers. Uncle Harry's is not a missionary now. Now, Uncle was just a seeker, a dreamer sincerely blessed. Of this there couldn't be a shadow of doubt. The fact that his flesh was weaker than even our Mary guest took even her some time to figure out. In all those languid latitudes, the atmosphere's exotic. To take up moral attitudes would be too idiotic. Though nobody could be meeker than Uncle had been before, I'll bet today he's giving way at practically every pore. Poor Uncle Harry. Having become a missionary, found the natives' morals rather crude. He and Aunt Mary swiftly imposed an arbitrary ban upon them shopping in the mews. They all considered this silly and decided to rebel. They burnt his boots and several suits, which made a horrible smell. The subtle implication was that Uncle could go to hell. Poor Uncle Harry, after some words with dear Aunt Mary, thought the time had come to make a row. He lined up all the older girls in one of the local sheds. But while he was reviling them and tearing himself to shreds, they took their mother hubbards off and tied them around their heads. Uncle Harry's not a missionary now. Poor Uncle Harry, after some tears from dear Aunt Mary, called upon the chiefs for a powwow. They didn't brandish knives at him. They really were awfully sweet. They made concerted dives at him and offered him things to eat. But when they threw their wives at him, he had to admit defeat. Uncle Harry's not a missionary now. He's awfully happy, but he's certainly not a missionary now. 